Now in this lesson we're going to look at the time value of money. It sounds like a complicated topic but it's actually very simple. Okay, You can imagine if I were to have uh, if I were to come to a bank account and it's November and I see that there's a hundred and one rand in this bank account and I know that it earns one percent interest per month. Okay, now then if you just think about it a little bit you'll notice that a month ago there must have been a hundred rand in this account. So in October that hundred rand in one month earned 1% of interest and that is 1 rand so there's 101 rand in the bank account in another month it will earn another 1% interest on this amount okay which means the new amount will be 102 rand and 1 cents it will earn 1 rand and 1 cents so now it will be 102 rand at the end of december now do you notice that at different times the value of the money, okay, the value of the money is different, okay. That is called the time value of money and it's got to do with the fact that money is earning interest or due to inflation money is worth less but we'll stick to the idea of money earning interest, okay. So if I look at a timeline again, so here's a timeline, okay, and at a certain point in this timeline I have an amount that that is in this bank account. If I want to know what will it be worth in the future, then I will work out the future value. And how do we do that? Well, we take that amount, multiply it with the bracket 1 plus i to the power of n. It's the normal future value formula for compound growth. And as a matter of fact, this process of finding the future value is actually called compounding. Compounding is to find the future value of a certain present value. Now how about finding a past value? So let's say I want to know what was the value in the past. So what was it at this time? Well it's actually the same formula, look at that. It is also 1 plus i to the power of n but this time negative n. This is called discounting. Discounting because in the past the value should be less due to the inflation uh, interest. Okay, so how am I going to remember it? Well, it's actually quite easy. N just tells me how many time periods I go into the future if it's positive and into the past and then it's negative. Okay, so if I'm going in the negative direction on the timeline, I'll use a negative, or in the positive direction, I will use a positive. And it's as simple as that. When we find a future value, we call it compounding, and when we are trying to find a past value, we are discounting an amount. Hope you got that. Briefly, in the next video, we'll look at easy examples, finding compounding um, values and discounting values. Okay, so here's an example of time value of money. Consider the value x is equal to 5,306 Rand on the timeline below. Okay, there we see there's x, 5,306 Rand at year 7. Let y be this value of x at time t. So there's time t, okay, and that's the value y, and it's the same value but at a different time period. Okay, so what is the value of y if interest was calculated at 5% per annum compounded every year? And this time we notice, okay, so here's our value for x. We need to go backwards. What do we call that again? Discounting. We are discounting with 1, 2, 3, 4 years. So we're going to use this formula. y is equal to x. 1 plus y to the power of n and the only thing that we should remember is because I'm going backwards on my number line this n is going to take a negative value so do we know y? No, y is still unknown. Do we know the value of x? Actually we do, it's 5306 
do we know the value of i the interest we are working in years it wasn't specified so we'll use the yearly rate of five percent means divide by a hundred and now n very careful n is now one two three four times that interest was added but because i'm going backwards i am doing negative four i am discounting and now if i substitute all of this into my formula i get five three oh six times one plus zero comma zero five to the power of negative four and if we work that out five three zero six times in a bracket 1.05 when it's added to the power of 4 but with a negative okay it's negative 4 gives me 4365.26 gives me 4325 comma 2.5. There we go. That would be the value at time t. And just very important to note, do you notice how these two values, the past value is less than the future value, which makes sense because the future value included more interest. Okay. In the next video, we'll look at an example that is a slight bit more complicated than this, but it comes down to the same idea. See you then. Okay, so here we have a time value of money question that is a little bit more challenging. Kendra invests into an annuity fund. She invested 2,400 Rand quarterly for 13 years into a fund that earned interest at 10% per annum compounded quarterly. After that, the money remained in the fund earning interest. How much is it worth three quarters after the last investment? Okay, so if we were to have a timeline okay this is time zero and now for 13 years wherever that is for 13 years it earns interest after that 13 years it's in there for another three quarters so see she makes quarterly investments okay so she's not investing every year she's investing four times every year and after the 13 years there's another three quarters okay and the question is what is the value at this time what is the future value now we can very easily go and calculate the future value at time 13 that's that's a normal annuity question so that will be the future value is x1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 just this simple formula okay but now we notice that we are going to have to go add another three time periods but I can't go and add it here because that will mean there are three extra payments and they aren't the payments or the investments stopped at time 13 the money only earned interest so all I have to do is to take this answer that I get and compound it for three more time periods I'll just compound it further and how will we do that well let's just use the formula so what is going to happen is we this is going to be our formula let me just use a different color okay we will have the future value of the annuity would simply be this formula and the answer to this formula will give me the amount after 13 years okay but then after that I have to compound it so I I'll have another bracket here I'll have to compound it for another three time periods I'm just going to use M for this this will be my second time period that will be my first time period okay now let's go and see which values I have do I have the future value no I don't I'm busy with my stock taking do I have my recurring investment amount they said it was 2400 quarterly okay important quarterly so this is 2400 every quarter do I have my interest 
Remember, we must use quarterly interest, and they have given us yearly interest per annum, 10% per annum. So we have to ask ourselves, if I get it every quarter, how many times do I get it in a year? We already saw it's four times in one year that we will earn interest. So we must divide the 10% with four. And because it's percent, we also need to divide with 100. So I'm going to divide with 400. Now, N is now the number of tie investments she has made. Okay, she's made four investments every year for 13 years. So it's four times 13, which gives me 52. And finally, M is the second time period. And that's the portion where she's not investing, but she is still earning interest. So that M, uh, it's, it's earning the same interest rate, but uh, that M is different. That M is now only for three times is she earning interest. She's getting interest every quarter, but only for three quarters. So that's it. And now we simply substitute. Okay. So in substituting, we get 2,400. 1 plus 10 over 400 to the power of 52 minus 1 all over 10 over 400. And then this whole thing is multiplied again with the bracket 1 plus i 10 over 400, this time only to the power of 3. Okay, so it's calculated 2400 times, and then the big bracket on top, there's two brackets 1 plus 10 over 400 to the power of 52 minus 1. That's my top bracket, close that bracket, divide, and I'm just going to put this in a bracket as well. Okay, so that I divide with 10 over 400. Okay, so divided by in brackets 10 over 400, close that bracket, and then this whole thing must now again be multiplied with this last bracket, and that one is 1 plus 10 over 400 to the power of 3. And that gives me an answer of 269,940. 69,940. And I think it was 71 cents. Okay, here we go. That is how much there will be in the bank account at the end of three more time periods after the annuity matured. Another way you could have done it was to simply go and work out at time 13 what was the what was the future value of the annuity and get that answer first. After you got that answer then you just multiply or compound it for another three time periods. And that's it. I really don't think that's too difficult. I hope you agree with me. So uh, good luck. Cheers.